everybody, it's Dowler here at Speedway, checking in with 9065P Phantom Robotics coming in from Missouri. Had a great run here so far at Speedway and a lot of great stuff going on with their robot. Take a look at what they've designed here so far. A lot of great stuff going through. We'll be talking about a great redirect mechanism that they have for that. Some future iterations they're looking into and a lot of improvements they made from the summer. So let's learn more about this team, Phantom Robotics, coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Eddie, let's start talking about your design process a bit more. When we were talking earlier, your team was working during the summer, uh, getting stuff going. So talking about how that process has gone through up until this event. Yeah, so like he said, we started our design process in the summer once the game came out. Our first robot we wanted to use, this is our first time going to a signature event. So our first iteration of our robot was basically just used to show our coach that we wanted to be competitive and we were capable of being competitive. And so that was what we used to figure out what kind of mechanisms we wanted to use, what kind of scoring systems we wanted to use, what worked, what didn't. So from there, we made our second iteration, which we then took to our first competition in here. And he says your first time at a signature event. What's been your uh, overall experience here so far? Have you enjoyed it? It's been so cool. This is like one of the bigger tournaments that we've like ever been to. Besides like we've been to Open, we've been to Worlds, but this is like by far like one of the coolest events that we've been so to. So definitely recommend to other teams yeah, if they haven't been to a signature sure. event yet? For sure. Very cool with that. And you know, looking from a design process wise on this, like how does your team like work together and communicate to get the job done on your team? So we actually have to be very communicative with each other because we are a school organization team, which means that a bunch of us do lots of other things outside of robotics. So not all of us can always be at practice together. So one thing that we are very capable and we make sure to do is to talk to each other about what gets done during the day, our weekly plans, our monthly plans, just keeping everything really concise to a timeline of what all we want to get done. Well, this I learned, you can do stuff outside of robotics, so that's mm -hmm. cool. But uh, let's pass over to Lane, talk a little bit more about your uh, chassis that you have going on on there, and it will be uh, going up through your Mogo clamp, too. Yeah. So for our chassis, we didn't want to go too fast, but it was important to us. The main thing was that it was sturdy. So we spent a lot of time making sure everything was properly boxed. Um, we chose to go with six motors, which is 360 RPM with blue inserts. Yeah, go ahead and flip it. Okay. So as you can see, there's many crossbars and it's all very boxed well. Um, and this has proven very effective in terms of driving because I have kind of an aggressive driving style. Um, it's just proven very useful. Then if we want to go to our clamp, so for our clamp, it was important to us for it to be consistent. So during Auton, we were able to clamp consistently and not have it get thrown off. So we added a sheet of plastic near the bottom. And then when the ring goes into it, or the tree, <laughs> when the tree goes into it, it stops it right there. And then as this clamps down, what happens is that plastic bends backwards to a certain point where it gets stopped. And then when that happens, it is in the perfect position for our intake. We also have added this standoff um, with this rubber stop, and that has um, stopped it from going too far in, because originally we were having the problem of it going in here, because we couldn't add anything to stop it. So we added this stopper, which has worked really well. Lynn, I gotta ask you, you mentioned you have an aggressive driving style. What does that mean to you exactly? I, well, I guess it doesn't mean to your teammates, really, but. I mean, I don't know if my teammates love it, but. I would definitely say I just am not afraid to go for crazy stuff. Like in one of our last matches, uh, the opponent tipped over one of our goals and I was just able to push it back and get it back up and then continue to score on it. So um, I think it's just always staying flexible and just never being afraid to try something really either dumb or smart. Hey, I think you got to go all out, especially yeah. at a signature event, right? Yeah. So I can appreciate that. Uh, Donovan, let's talk about the uh, redirect uh, that you're uh, rocking here as well, too. Love to hear uh, you know, your process and your experience for that. And if there's any maybe future plans you're looking at doing with that, too. Yeah, for sure. So we knew that coming into this tournament, that we needed a, an ability to score on the alliance rings and the high stakes, or the alliance stakes and the high stakes. And the only way that we've seen that happen with tournaments we've been to, the, like I said, up in Omaha, um, is with a redirect. So this redirect is very different from what we see in our, our, in our school because we have three other sister teams with us. 
Um, our redirect, actually, the two bar kind of comes down like this. Thank you. Let me get the two bar. Pull the two bar down. Oh, yeah. The two bar comes down like that, and then a ring, when it comes up, just kind of flips like that. And then when we run the intake in reverse, the ring folds down in there, and then that just yeah. flaps like that. And then when we want to score on a on a, on a high stake, it goes up, it flips out, and we're, ba we're able to essentially take it like this, and with a ring on there, we can just pull it straight out without any complication with getting it out with this bar that we had to cut, because, yeah. And we were talking earlier that you might be considering going with a Lady Brown uh, type yes. of mech for that, so yes. is that something you're pretty sure you're gonna go with? That is something 100%. We are, that's on our very next iteration, the Lady Brown mech. Without, honestly, it's really hard to line up uh, this redirect, especially. Uh, there's just so much weight that we don't have control over. And so Lady Brown, we have direct control over with our two five and a halves. It just pops up and goes right onto those high stakes. Jack, I think uh, something that your team has done really well is your autonomous modes for it. You've been really strong in that, and of course the competition. So talk to me more about what you're doing for auto, uh, and then uh, you got some uh, sensors you wanted to highlight as well too. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been kind of winging it with autonomous today. All right. I've been doing probably something different for almost every match. So we've been on the practice field a lot, definitely testing everything. But our most recent iteration of autonomous, I've been able to score about four rings on the blue left side, or the blue right side, I mean. and. I think it's been working pretty well and I'm excited to go start testing it again. Some sensors that we have over here is we have the inertial sensor over here that for a precise turning and then we also have a distance sensor right here so I can see when I've intake something into our, uh, into our robot over here. So yeah, it works pretty well. You said you were winging it for your uh, autos on there, so how are you actually programming your robot? I mean, is everything just dead reckoning or like what are you actually doing for that? Uh, I just go over to the practice fields and I just, I just start coding. All right, I love it. So yeah, I, mean, I uh, it was kind of funny because with uh, skills autonomous, I didn't have one walking into this tournament. And I coded that from scratch. Hey, respect for, for that. Tournament. Yeah, definitely. That was great. Well, Fancy Robotics, uh, first off, congrats on a great run so far. Can't wait to see how you do in the playoffs as we're filming this as well too. So good luck that way. Great robot. And thanks for giving us an explanation. A lot of great things teams can learn from this and good luck throughout the rest of the season. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.